Hey guys, it's Pastor Scott and Diane, and we're out at, at, out here at Restart, and I'm going to flip this around and uh, hit this share button. So hold on one second. I don't think that they busted me this week, so we'll be all right. So we're going to just share to a couple of our favorite groups, and then uh, just ask that you guys pray and hit the share button as usual. Pray and hit the share button. And let's just pray for the service. Lord Jesus, we just ask that you bless this service. All that will watch it now or later and everyone that's here. And uh, bless Pastor Bob and all the people that will serve today to make this happen for your glory. And we just bless you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Touch us and uh, teach us, O oh Lord, from your holy word. And we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Looks like Jay's back. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And uh, if you guys need anything at all, give us a call at 1-855-70-JESUS. 1-855-70-JESUS or log on to our website. And uh, we're up here at Restart Church, what is it, uh, Evergreen, Montana. God bless you all. So I need a bass so I can jam. So Lord Jesus, get me a bass guitar for Montana. In Jesus' name, amen. Please. <laughs> Water, we got notepad. <clears throat> we got music coming. Worship. You're teaching today, Pastor Bob? You're pe teaching today? Well, not you, but the Holy Ghost through you? Thank you. That was a trick question. I was one of those loaded ones. And that's it. Okay, here we are. Welcome to Restart. Woo! Let me say a few things about how we are set up in here. Those of you who are acutely aware may have noticed that we have some tables in here. Well, also, uh, we had overflow and our Fine Heritage Academy. That's the, that's the whole school association that comes and meets on this property every Tuesdays and Thursdays. And they got a bunch of kids. They grew like crazy from last year. Some, some didn't come because of the COVID thing, and that's okay. But more came, and they just fly around out of space. So they were using this space in here, and those tables were kind of quite a bit forward, actually. And, uh, they took everything down, put it all back up, and, and got into rows, and I said, hey, listen, let's let's work something out. So I kind of fussed in here. So if this is something that you think is a crazy idea and you don't like it, come talk to me about that. I'd like to hear that, okay? But I think functionally, we have 60 chairs up in front of this thing, and that's our, like our highest number before. So I don't think that after the COVID thing ends and folks begin to come back, we'll have nothing without having to reconfigure. So that's the idea there. Uh, if you see somebody you don't know their name, don't, don't be afraid to say hello and introduce yourself, right? Let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, just thanks so much for right now. Thanks for your mercies upon us, Lord God, and we pray, God, that your hand of mercy will be upon us as we learn from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, first order of business today is that it is a big deal. Last night, 6 o'clock, uh, began the first of Tishri, the month of Tishri. That is the that is the, the Hebrew New Year. And it's called Rosh Hashanah. And, and that took place starting in the evening and now it's today. So they blow, that's a shofar. A shofar, that's the goat horn that uh, they're blowing right there. And the Hebrew tradition is the shofar uh, was uh, reserved uh, when Abraham was sacrificing Isaac and the ram got caught. And so from that point, they used shofar as part of their uh, worship services. So that starts there. But I think even more important is uh, today, uh, pardon me, Saturday, was the first of 10 days. And the Jewish time calendar, these, these are the most important days going. And what they do, they, they seek God. They turn their hearts and, be, and are penitent. They turn all the stuff going on that they've been doing and they try and flush it away. And they really, for 10 days, try and pay attention. And that culminates then in Yom Kippur. 
Yom Kippur is the highest, most sacred day in all of Judaism. It is the day of atonement. Now that takes place on Monday next week. Thinking about maybe dealing with that from the pulpit here. And we'll talk about that. But that's a big deal. And so we, uh, because our roots are sort of that way. Now I'm talking about Hebrew roots here while we're talking about why the word came up. There's a big movement out there that would combine the Hebrew activities with the Christian activities. But um, there's, there's, there's a bit of a deception in there because without taking my mask off. Yeah, please. It's hard to hear you. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. You need that silly thing. You're six yeah. feet away. <clears throat> you know how good it feels to have to take a mask off and people start clapping? <laughs> Yeah, it looks better with them saying anything. I know, I just got so excited to start with it. I wasn't thinking it. So, all we need is Jesus. Nothing added to Jesus. There's no such thing as Jesus plus. Amen. Now, there's Jesus changing me so that I change. So, there's a change there, but it's on my end, not on his end. Right? So, that's what Yom Kippur is about, and we'll talk about that. Uh, coming up. But first, we want to have our time in prayer. Very important we start on prayer. And, and when we pray, I think it's a great idea to start with our own stuff. Things that go on with us. Why is that? Because the Lord says, if we confess our sin, he's what? Faithful, Faithful and, and, and just. just. What? Forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all my sins. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like a pretty cool state to be in, Right? when I go and do my intercessory prayer for others or for my, my petitions for myself. So let's, we'll start with our own stuff. We're going to have a moment of prayer, a minute of prayer in a minute. So start with our own stuff. Now, here's what's going on in our little church. Miss Alyssa, who was in church today, and I honor her for that, is having some respiratory distress as a result of all this. I don't know about you guys. My eyes are burning. My heart's mangled. My, you know, I got itchy everywhere. I shouldn't have told that, huh, Beauty? Be shaking her head. <laughs> All right. So this ain't starting too good. So we'll be sure to pray for Miss Alyssa and those who are compromised in love that they might be uh, made uh, better. Now, Oliver is great grandmother. Oliver might not know him. He's a great kid. Shows up on Wednesdays. Real active and uh, encourage you. A real leader in there. Kind of the kind of guy that Pastor Jason is bringing up along, alongside the teaching of Titus 2 fashion. Older instruct the younger, right? And so his great-grandmother uh, fell and mangled her hip. Oh, man. Now, those of us who are familiar with geriatrics, and maybe you've got uh, grandparents or parents in that situation, broken hips are not good for older people. No. They, uh, a lot of stuff can go on, so we'll be praying her up, huh? Amen. Uh, our next one that we want to be thinking about is uh, Eric and Connie. They have a daughter, and her name is Stacy, and she's been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Uh. Now, that's tough sledding, man. That's tough sled. So my thought on this is, God never gives you stuff that you can't endure. Hmm, hard to really see that, but she must have some broad shoulders right there in that family as well. Hmm. So we want to hold that up. Because that, that path can be a, a, an okay path, but it can be a, a terrible path as well, right, as far as our human interactions are concerned. So we'll pray that. We'll pray with Stacy up open. Have her in mind in your prayer list, right? And you may remember Brandon, he had white uh, glasses. He was here attending regularly, and then this COVID plague broke out, and he's, so he's going to plan Bravo. But he has had chronic, messed up stuff. Had an MRI done, all that. So we need to pray that boy up and give him some strength that his musculature might improve, and he'll be in a good spot that way. And then lastly, I think it's important for us to just think about uh, the COVID in general. But now we have a family that right within our own group that has a friend, and they've got it. Numbers were up uh, over the three-day weekend, right? Kids are back in school. Everyone uh, got kind of crazy over the three-day weekend, and hospitals jammed. Now, uh, the numbers and how they're reported and not reported uh, certainly can be discussed and understood, okay? But at the top of that, not the very top, Jesus is at the very top, but there is a sinister component to all this stuff, and we're heading into the last days. And so anything to mangle us and, and, and shake our faith and make us think backwards, that's what's going to be happening to us in the future here. And I think this COVID falls into that category. Under God's oversight. But we know in the book of Revelation, it seems to be a little nasty, don't they? Yep. They take a bad turn. How can God do that? Well, he's gone. It's in the book. So we have to prepare ourselves for that. So let's be praying about that, okay? We're going to 
okay, one minute, right now. Yes, please. We had Tammy do her medical procedure this coming this weekend. She's pretty nervous. About okay, so Miss Tammy, world famous Tammy guy. <laughs> That's her world famous uh, handyman love bundle back there. We call him Tiny. <laughs> Tammy's going to have a procedure in Seattle. They're going to drive over to Seattle. It's a big deal. They're going to mess around back here and, and with her brain. Right. So the medulla oblongata. So they'll be messing back here. When you start messing with people's brains, yeah. Yeah, that's so scary we need business. to bring that girl up. So that's added to our list. Okay, so that's when you've got to put your noodle when we stop. Well, let's stop for a minute. Start with yourself. Eyeball these needs. And then uh, pray up the service. Pray up that I might uh, speak uh, confidently in the truth. Pray up that your hearts might be able to receive confidently. Okay? Already so did. Here we go. One minute. Father, we just lift our hearts together and united right now on every one of us on the same frequency, every one of us, Lord. We hang on your words today that you might instruct us from your holy word, that we might change the things we need to be changed, encouraged in the areas that we need to be encouraged in, uh, uh, solidified and fortified in the areas of anxieties that we might be carrying. Mercy now upon us for the rest of this uh, sermon together and this and service together. I pray that as we sing this song, it's good that Pastor Jason is going to lead us in, that our hearts might be encouraged in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So let's stand up together, shall we? Let's stand together. Pastor Jason is going to lead us. Good to see you back, bro.
<laughs> Encore. <laughs> Good job. All right. John 17, 11. That's where, that's where our lesson is coming from today. We have Bibles open up to John 17. Uh, it's a great passage. Uh, the tables are here, and I think it's... That's kind of cool. I don't know. Good place to take notes. Ms. said, hey, you're going to try and get people to take notes, she says. <laughs> so this would be a, a good spot to take notes. <laughs> right on those tables there. So that would make you feel pretty good that they're out there, huh? All right. John 17. Let's remember something, though. <laughs> Slow down. You gotta put on your lead shoes. When you walk through the Bible, wear your lead shoes. Go slow. There's no rush. There's no hurry. Each word, each phrase matters. Okay, here we go. John 17, 11, right out of King James here. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee. Notice the idea of in the world. Then a little farther on in our passage, he says this. They, meaning the disciples, us, are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. See that distinction, right? In the world, of the world. Many who have gone to Sunday school since this week saying, well, you got to be in the world, but you don't have to be of the world. Very powerful. Very powerful to think that way. So that then is the foundation that, that John is writing here. The Lord Jesus is talking to the Father. This is called the priestly prayer, chapter 17. Huge, important prayer. Huge prayer. And, and he's pointing out that we need a biblical worldview. And the thing, the point that stuck out to me as I read this was that there's a distinction between being of the world and in the world. Of being of the world and in the world. And our passage is going to say that, doesn't it? It says that Jesus is no longer in the world. But he also said that believers need to remain in the world. Huh. Let's jump back to that passage to see how that reads again. Okay, that's verse 11. I'm no more in the world, but they are. They're in the world. And since then, this is true because of this starting point. Because of this worldview, there's certain consequences, there's certain repercussions that we're going to learn about. And the Bible teaches us about. And it's going to affect how you look at things. How you, how you, the challenges of life. The stuff that really stinks. Why you're upside down. The worries, anxieties of life. The things that you feel good about or proud about. It's going to change the way you are and the way you think when you look at the world that Jesus is no longer in the world. 
So there are implications then to the way we perceive our world, the way we go through our world, when we think about Jesus being no longer in the world. Let's go to the scripture, shall we? One of the first things is true, is that the Holy Spirit was given, huh? That's one of the first implications of Christ uh, going to heaven, no longer being in the world. Look at this verse, uh, verse 7, uh, chapter 16. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, as if, as if Jesus could lie, huh? So when, when Jesus says, I'm telling you the truth, he just put this in that highlighter in the book. Uh, pay attention. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper won't come. But if I go, if I'm not in the world anymore, if I'm not in the world, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. Huh? How about John 14, uh, 16? And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comfort, that he may abide with you forever. One of the implications, if we are believing that Jesus is no longer in the world, that means that we have been given the Holy Spirit. Why is that important? It's important. Amen. It's going to change the way you look at the stuff going on around you. It's going to change the way you feel about you, and about your circumstances, about your situation. It's going to change your worldview. Because the Holy Spirit has been given. Now you can probably pick up with 10, 15 more other ones, but I'll give you a second one that came to, oh, came to my mind, and that is that we have the power to resist evil. We have the power to resist evil. Because our worldview is that Jesus is no longer in the world, we have power. If we think that way, let's look at 1 John 4 4, shall we? You are from God, little children. And had overcome them. But because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Yes. We've got power in this life. If we have the worldview that Christ went to heaven and the Holy Spirit's given, greater is the Holy Spirit in us than all the stuff going around. I know that life is tough. I know that our shoulders don't feel strong enough to carry the burden. I know the trace is tucked into our chest as we pull, hard as we can. And life is difficult. But greater is the one in you. That's our worldview. How about this verse from James? Submit yourselves to God. Mm. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. That's real power right there, huh? Think about that verse. But I think what happens to me, I don't know what happens to you, what happens to me is this. I want to resist the devil. And so I say, devil, be gone. Or I might pray something like that. I just don't pray that way. But, but, and I expect him to flee. But see, I missed that first part. Submit. We've got to submit ourselves to God first. Yes. We've got to be on the Jesus path. If you have some contradictions in your life, if you're living a double life, if you're content to be disobedient to parents, to disobedient to the word of God, then he's not going to run away from you. Why? Because you're already in his clubhouse. Only one is going to be done is us to run in his arms. And it doesn't have to be that way. Because why? Because John says this. The one, who is the one who overcomes? Look at that. Overcomes. Now, it doesn't say you're not going to have tribulation. It says that you will overcome the problems of the world. But if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then you've got power. You've got power. It's going to affect the way you look at it. Jesus is no longer in this world. You have power to resist the devil. Here's the third item that, that kind of occurred to me as I thought about well, the implication of Christ uh, being in heaven is that he's coming back, baby. Yes. Oh, no, yeah. you did. How much time do you think about this? Maybe you're stressing at work. Maybe, maybe things are lined up a little tough for you. Maybe the little ones at home are being annoying. I can't imagine that in New York. Amen. Amen. Thank you. But at those times, if you stop to think about Christ returning, it's going to take some of that edge off. Because your worldview is going to include that, his return. Check this out in John 14, a little before our pen. <coughs> if I go and prepare a place for you, what? I am going to come again. I'm coming in. And I'm going to receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Isn't that elegant? Yes. Just think, he's coming back for us. Another out of God. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Listen to these words, how precious and powerful they are. The promise of his return. Because Jesus is in heaven, because he's no longer, he's no longer of the world, because he's there, the implications 
are strong for you and I. In our worldview, how we choose to view the stuff that goes on. So let's look a little farther then. Jesus is no longer in the world, we saw, but what does it also say? That, that you and I got to stay in the world, don't we? And because we are in the world, there are some implications to that and how we view the world. You and I as believers, yeah, we think about the great by and by, time coming, no more tears. There's some cool stuff going to be going on. Reunited with some of our relatives. And I think we'll all be surprised how many of our relatives come, got in there. And I also think they'll be surprised that we did. <laughs> but that's, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about being in the world. And what are the implications? Well, we're kept in God's name. And this comes directly from our passage. Let's turn back to our passage then in John 17, verse 11. Now you saw this right here. This is the one the point we made previously. I'm no longer in the world. They themselves are in the world, and I come to you. How does that verse continue? It says, Holy keep Father, talking. keep them in your name. Keep through the name. See, since we are in the world, Christ has prayed that we are kept by God. That's going to change the way you look at life. That's going to change the way you view your worldview of how troubles come upon you and your ability to fight back, your ability to find yourself, I'll use the word cautiously, successful in this life. To be the best believer you can be, use the gifts you have the best way. God is going to keep you. Thessalonians says, the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you. And what? Protect you. God's going to strengthen and protect you. You feel alone in this life? You feel you can't do anymore? That life is just crumbling or all around you and the pressures are on your, on your, just too much to bear? God is going to protect you. Corinthians says, who will sustain you to the end. Mm. To the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Powerful verse. I hope you're taking these citations down. By the way, all, all my notes, all this outline material will be on the website. I usually uh, get there by Monday sometime. It'll all be up there along with the video. You can watch the video. So uh, if, you don't, if you miss something, uh, instead of putting the rewind button on me, you can do that at home. So, But I encourage you to take notes. Take these citations down so you can go through these verses again. Very, very important stuff. So we're kept in God's name. What else does our passage here in John 17 teach us? Well, he teaches this. Uh, Jesus' prayer says we are one with Jesus and the Father. Now, <laughs> before I go to that passage, just think about what I'm saying. No, no, no. Let me back up. Think about what God's saying. Think about what Jesus is praying. Look at this. Here we are. Here's, here's that same verse. Look at all this fruit we're squeezing out of number 11. Huh? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. We're just squeezing the juice like crazy out of this verse. There's that, there's that part about we're in, the, we're in the world. There's that part where the Father's keeping in his name, right? But look how he asked. That what? That they may be one. Even as we are one. What would that do to you in your life and the way you view things in your life, your circumstances, your situation, if you believe and knew you were one with God? God. That's what it says. It's in the world. I'm not making in the word. I'm not making that up. A little farther on in uh, chapter 17 says this. I am them and you and me. Look at that. That they may be perfected in unity. Isn't that elegant? God wants to perfect us in unity with him. With God. God's desire is that you have unity with him. What, what does that do then to your Goliath-sized issues and problems and things you worry about? It shrinks them right down. But that's a feature of your worldview, how you choose to look at the world, if that were one with God, right? Now, look at how ESV has that, become perfectly one. Isn't that elegant? I love that. Perfected in unity, per, per, become perfect, perfectly one. That's a wonderful verse. Now, now, and not only are we to be united with Christ, not only are we to have uniform ideas with Jesus, but with each other. Amen. God doesn't want divisions among us, right? Now, may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another. God seeks unity with us right here. Parents and children, uh, people right here, all just us together, those who are listening in on the, on the one accord of crusades, uh, what do they call that thing? Streaming. I'm such a modern pastor. You might not want to tune into this station again. <laughs> Being the same mind. 
My wife's frowning at me. I have two frowns in one service. That's not good. It's like two thumbs down and two squashed tomatoes. <laughs> We're one with Jesus and the Father. The implication of us being in the world is God has promised these few viewpoints. I got another one. Right out of the text, easy to find. We're recipients of God's joy. Recipients of God's joy. Look at verse 13 in our passage. And now, come out of thee, and these things I speak in the world. Notice, he's speaking these things in the world. So he's speaking to you and I who are in the world. And what's he going to say? He's going to say this. That they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Mm. Right out of our passage. Verse 13 of our passage. Right there. That we're to have joy fulfilled. Wow, think about that. I can't tell you how many people I've been in counsel with who say, I'm just not happy anymore. He doesn't make me happy. She doesn't make me happy. We're talking about joy here. Happiness is one thing. Joy is another. Joy is that deep stuff going, okay, I know there's stuff going on, but I know my Savior's got my hand. Ooh, that's joy, right? Check this verse out. Out of the Psalms. It's elegant. Make known to me the paths of life. In your presence there is fullness fullness of joy. joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Just think. But where are where is the fullness of joy? In his presence. So those of us who are on this planet, us kids here, who are in the world, we need to be in his presence to, to see that joy. Huh? We're gonna bounce back on that point in just a minute. Now back to our text. Next, we pull this right out of our passage. We're to be hated by others. Because God has us in this world, we're gonna be hated by other people. Check it out, verse 14 of our, of our text today. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world any more than I am. Wow. Because we are in the world, we are to be expected to be hated by people. Think about that. Uh, my heart avoidance quotient is very high. That's why I normally attend to my wife's facial features. I, don't, I want to please people. But you know what? We're not going to be able to do that. Because when we walk the Jesus path, stuff's going to happen. Huh? Jesus said in Matthew, Blessed are ye when men shall what? Revile you, persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sin. This is what we should be experiencing. This is, this is the normal, the new normal for the believer, is to expect to run into stuff. Now, I'm not talking about arguing silly things. There's only, for I, I determined to know among you, Paul said, only Christ can crucify. That's it. The rest is stuff. Yeah, there's some important things in there, but beyond that, that's it. And we should be living in such a feature, in such a way, that we're to be hated by others. That's what Jesus said right there. Last point here out of this passage I'd like to make because uh, as an implication of our worldview because Christ has left us in the world and that's this. We got to stay here. Boy, that's a tough theological point. God loved me so much, how come I'm not with him now? Why did he abandon me, huh? But see, this under protection part is really important. Look at uh, John 17, 15, right out of our passage. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world. Jesus is saying, I don't want, to, I, I don't want to take these people out of this world. Wow, it's almost a, a condemnation, isn't it? It's like a life sentence. Well, it is a life sentence. That, that here we got to stay here. But look how the verse continues. But that you would what? Protect them. Protect them. Protect them. Look at John 16:33. He says this: In this world, that's where we are. In this world, what's going to happen? You're going to have trouble. Am I telling anybody in this room anything they don't already know? <laughs> you bet. Trouble. Well, I bet. You know what would be interesting? We just sat down and everyone took a turn and said, "Here, here's what the stuff that's bugging me." I bet we'd be in here a month <laughs> because we all got stuff, man. In this world, you're going to have troubles. But what does he say? Hey, take heart. I am bigger than anything you go through. I have overcome the world. All the world's stuff. And the world's got plenty of stuff to offer us, plenty of pitfalls in front of us. But I've overcome that, huh? Yeah. So we, we just, we've been looking at this distinction of being of the world and in the world. Jesus is no longer in the world, and believers remain in the world. But then there's a whole other level. We know that Jesus is not of the world, right? We know that much. But he 
says this, is that you and I are not of the world either. We're not of the world either. Well, if that's true, then there's some implications to how I must view my world. Huh. Let's talk about it. Right out of our passage, verse 14. For they are not of the world any more than I am. Are you reading that? You and I are not of the world any more than Jesus is. That just, that messes my burden up. A little farther down in uh, chapter 17, it says this. They're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. There's an equivalency there. How do we know that? Well, there's some implications to that that aren't there. And when I say worldview, if you and I could just keep this lens on our heads and, and learn from some of these, these points we're talking about today, there's only 12 of them I've done eight already. <laughs> if we just kind of keep that stuff in front of our noodle, it's going to make a big difference in how we view things, make a big difference. Well, one of them is what? We're seated with Christ right now. Amen. What are you talking about? Here I am. I'm, I'm standing here. Pastor Scott's sitting over there. You're, you're crazy, man. Oh, yeah. Crazy for Jesus. Scott's on fine bride are sitting over there. Are you kidding me? Young Joshua, I'm not sure what he's doing. It's okay. <laughs> right on, son. God bless you for being here. Good leadership on your part. Way to go. Help your family members know. You got little ones looking at you. We're seated with Christ right now. Right this minute. Huh? Why do I say that? Look at this first Paul writes. Is he making this up? He raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places. Well, that doesn't make sense. I'm standing right here. But see, we've got to forget it. We're, we're, we're not about this. this. This is articulating protoplasm. This ain't me. I'm different. I'm in here. I'm the eternal part. And why is there a surprise that the spirit can be in two places? Well, he can, can he? When you pray for somebody, pray for grandma or that great grandma with that broken hip, Christ is right there just as well as he is within you at the same time. And Jesus is telling us, Paul is telling us by the word of God, which the word is Christ, that we are in heaven right now seated with him in the heavenly places. Just think if you thought about that when the trouble comes. If your worldview was so established that you saw, hey, the truth of my life, hey, I'm not even here. Let's find another verse. A little, a little earlier in the book of Ephesians, uh, this is done out of the NIV. Praise be to God. Great praise. Nice start, huh? Yes. And Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has what? Blessed us. Blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. Oh, it's so flowery. No, 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 no. It's authentic. It's real. It's true. It doesn't say he blessed me on earth here, although it has. It says he's blessing me. We're in the heavenly realms. That's where the blessing's going. He's blessing us, you and I, in the heavenly realms. Why? Because that's where we are. That's where you are. Oh, yeah. My arch brothers tells me I'm standing here. I recognize the pains of life. We got kids saying stupid stuff to us, hurting our feelings. We got people at work that are, are jawboning us. We got all kinds of issues going on. Sincere, troublesome issues. But our place is not here. This world is not my home. We're seated with Christ right now. Amen. A couple more points. We're not of this world, you guys. And if we really believe that we were not of this world, then we'd also be able to believe that we possess all we need right now. To Peter, his divine power has granted to us what? Everything pertaining to life and godliness. Is there anything missing from the word everything? No. no. Everything. Second Peter 1, 3. So the need you have, the fear that's working in your life, the thing, the conundrums that have you frustrated, in your worldview that says, hey, I'm with Jesus, that will reduce the threat. That's the purpose of this, of this title today, the purpose of our message today, to, to put on glasses that are spiritual and look at the world around us that we might respond in a certain way. Everything pertaining to life and godliness, godliness, he says a little further on. His divine power has granted us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Godliness is a little past. Through what? 
through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. See, now, here's the problem. How much of the true knowledge are you and I digging out in our lives? How much work are we doing in that? Because although it's true we possess all we need, you got to be attentive in order to possess it. Here, here then is the bridge. Here then is the fabric between living on this earth and, and the heavenly domain and where, where we are spiritually is this, this learning we have to do to trust, to gain knowledge of God more and more knowledge. Thy word I have hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. We have to do more with the word of God. Let's check this out. Look what Paul writes to Timothy. Don't forget Timothy was a pastor. Paul was trying to school him up, get him ready for pastoral work. He says, study to show thyself approved. Unto God, a workman that needeth not be should be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Is that is that you? Is that me he's talking about right there? Do your best. Accurately handle the Bible, he says. Paul is pleading with him. He's giving him instruction. See, if we're to, to grab on to this idea that we live in the heavenlies, we must have the knowledge of God to stand on in order to make that claim. The knowledge of God to stand on to say, I rebuke you, Satan, because I have submitted to you, my Lord. Let's see another verse about that. Boy, can't be Solomon for being pity. An intelligent heart acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Is that us? Is that you and me? Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look how important that is. We're supposed to be growing in grace and knowledge of the Lord, right? We have to be attentive in order to possess all that God's telling us to possess. We're not all the world, but the connection point between us and our, and our, our domain in heaven is that we learn more about God. And then we're hungry in our Bibles to read our Bibles, to pray, to serve other people, to meet together, and to proclaim the name of Christ. We have to have all those things. And what's related to that, then, is that we must love the Lord. Here's the sticking point. We love ourselves. We like ourselves. Even when I'm a goofball, I like myself. We're to love the Lord, right? How about this verse in 1 John? Love not the world. This is going to hurt. This hurt me when I read it. I had to stop and I put my lead shoes on. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Here's the consequence. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. There it is. Ouch. Black, black. We start getting off on worldly understanding, worldly pursuits, worldly desires, worldly glories, worldly intentions. If we get on that track, it's understandable to get on that track. If we get over on that track, the love of God is not in me. Look what it says in Deuteronomy. This is a very, very familiar verse, right? Our, our uh, Hasidic Jew, the one who's really orthodox, will say this verse uh, twice a day, once in the morning, once at night. Love the Lord, thy God, with all your heart, all thy soul, and all thy might. I don't know, man. Look at that word might. It always catches me. I go, oh, I love you, Lord. And my soul, you know, my mind, will, and emotions, I can kind of figure that out. But all my might, am I giving it all my might to love the Lord? Oh, I'm tired. I don't want to get out of bed and have a Bible study before I go to work or get home. Oh, I'm tired. I don't want to study the Bible. I want to go to bed and just get some sleep. And that's not all my might. All my might is saying, you know, I'm, I'm strong enough to overcome that stupid idea, and I'm going to study the Word of God. Amen. I'm going to get stronger in that because there's an implication to my world here. And that implication is I'm not of this world, but i got to love the Lord in order to possess the things that are not of this world. Huh? All right. So when we talk about believers worldview, we have 12 points we made. 12 points that we made. If we were to walk around and have an idea of these 12 points and believe them, our lives would be different. Totally different. Because our worldview would be based on the Bible. The Holy Spirit was given to us. We have the power to resist evil. Jesus is coming back for us. God is keeping us. Keeping us secure. The name of the Lord is a strong power. The righteous run into it and are safe. God is keeping us. And we can have God's joy. He says we are to have God's joy. 
Go over that passage after we finish. And when you're on your own in a quiet place, go over that passage. We're going to have God's joy. Well, I don't feel joyful. Well, then, then maybe then we need to pay attention to some other things. Huh? We're, to spend, we're to be hated by, uh, by somebody. I don't like that feeling. I, 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 my heart avoidance force is very high. I want to be liked by people. But, you know, not everyone's going to like you when you stand for Jesus, huh? And, and, and we are, we're to remain in this world. We've we're, 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 we got some circumstances we don't like, but that's where God has put us. I don't like the fact that I lost my job. I don't like the fact that my wife hates me. I don't like the fact that I stole that money. I think she does. She loves me. <laughs> She's <laughs> laughing about it. Look at her. I don't like the fact that all this stuff's going in my life, but there I am in the middle of it. He has placed me there. In the much of all my stuff, we put you right in the middle of all that, right? And I am under his protection if I remain there. That's my worldview. And then the last four things we said were what? Wow, just think about this. This is revolutionized my prayer life. Lord, I'm already, I confess my sins, get my stuff done like we did earlier. But I'm seated with you already. And I picture that and I imagine that. And God gives me eyes to see that. And what a difference that makes to me standing here. What a difference it makes to know I'm seated with him. And we already possess all we need to, to defeat the things that are bugging us, right? But, 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 i got to be attentive. i got to study the word, show myself <coughs> as a workman, accurately handling the word of truth. I gotta, that's not me, man. And loving the Lord above ourselves. Very important, huh? So the question is this. Why don't it happen? Why, why, don't, why, why don't my life look like that? Huh? Well, I think I'd like to have a few minutes here to talk about that, okay? Look what Christ said. This, this is one of the, this, this is a tear verse for me. How often I wanted to gather your children together. Just as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not have it. You see, the reason that we fall off the Jesus path is because we want to. Mm. How does that work? What what is is there something there? Some some anatomy we can talk about? Is there some way we can make that clear? Let's let's talk about that. And we're going to go up to the book of James, uh, first chapter, verses fourteen through sixteen, in order to do that. Out of this lesson, we're going to learn a couple things. The first is that the demons will only mess with you twice. <clears throat> In two occasions, they will mess with you. The second thing we're going to learn, they're only going to tempt you in three ways. They only have three channels that they that work. That work, baby. But two ways. Let's talk about that. Here's the first. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust. Drawn away by his own lust. Now, there's unsurrendered territories in Bob Horn. There are things I have not given to God wholly. And, and, and my life doesn't reflect him. And those things, when, when this is the first part of any temptation. A demon comes up, don't forget. Don't be afraid of that word. Greater is, is he who is in me than he who is in him. Those stupid design critters who are going to burn forever. But they're going to come up to us. And they're going to draw us away. They're going to say something to turn our attention. That's the spot where we stop. The Bible doesn't say he's going to protect us from being drawn. Oh, look at Eve. Eve's attention was drawn. What was the first sentence that the devil gave her? Hath God said that you'll die? Hath God said that? Well, that notion drew her away. And her, they, well, she knew he said that. Right then. You and me, I'm talking to. Right then. God has said that. By the name of the Lord, I know this to be true. Here's the Bible verse to prove mm. That's the point where you and I have victory. Not the demon's going to come and mess with you, man. He's going to try and turn your attention. Has God said? And what does she do? Well, she answers him. Well, I'm not supposed to do this or that. And in fact, she misquoted God because she had a little piece in there, but, but she mis misquoted him. And here's the part then, here's the part then, when you turn your attention and you engage that temptation, 
we become enticed. And that's the second part, that's the second time and the most effective time that now you dialogue with the demon and he's going to try and figure out ways to entice you. I, I've drawn your attention, you, you're interested in some way or another, and now I'm going to entice you as to all the benefits of doing what you should be doing. And there are three. Let's take a look. For all that is in the world, not just part of the world, for all Enticement. Okay, now that I have your attention, 
let me tell you all the good deals I got home for you on this <laughs> side of that issue. Right? So that's what that is. So the question is, every man is tempted, drawn away by his own lust and ties, and then of course you know what happens, right? The lust that you have conceived, look at that, sperm A, conceives. What happens when it conceives? It brings it forth. It births sin. Doesn't it? Of course we know sin's not going to end up good. Sin always ends up bad. Huh. So that, those are the areas. These are the reasons why you and I don't go hold on to our worldview while we fall off the Jesus path. But i got to tell you something else. The Word of God is beautiful. He's not going to leave us in that state. And, and the reason is because we need to listen for His voice. Yes. And listen for His voice. No temptation has overcome you, but it's common to man, right? And God is faithful. And with the temptation, well, what provide a way of escape? And that way of escape is His voice. A still small voice when he's talking to you. The one you say, well, I hear that, but I'm still going to go this way. Yeah. The voice is trying to, 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 to pull you back. But, la, 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 I don't <laughs> hear that. And I go over here, right? That's that voice. But the scripture says, hey, each and every time, check this out. Out of Isaiah, great text, write this citation down. And although the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. Think about that. Adversity and affliction. Who doesn't know about that? Yeah, he gives it to you. Do you like it? No. God has left me. Why does he do this? We hear this in our own prayers all the time. And yet, this is what it happens. He gives it to us. There it is. There's no reason asking why. There it is. I got blue eyes. I wish they were brown. Huh? Got a man up here. Anyone who said the Christian walk was easy wasn't a Christian. It's tough to be a believer. God will give you stuff. Although he has yet, yet, however, your teacher's not going to hide himself anymore. Mm. He's going to, you're going to feel this way. You're going to feel like God has left me alone. I've got no strength in this area. I can't do any better than I'm doing now. Uh, this temptation is huge. My, my financial situation is in crisis. The relationship's broken. All these things that go on are true. But, but he is, after a moment, going to reveal himself. That's what it says right there. Those who wait upon the Lord will gain new strength. You gotta wait upon the Lord. New strength, a new species, a new variety of strength. Strength from a place you never anticipated strength would come from before. Strength in a way that you never experienced before. A new strength. That's what he's gonna give to you if we wait. Check this out. This verse continues. I love this. He's not going to hide himself anymore. He says he's not going to do it. What's he going to do? Well, he says your eyes are going to see your teacher. Amen. You see your teacher. <laughs> now that's not fixing stuff. But the step is so important to remember. I see my teacher. I'm not learning from this thing over here, this contraction of, of guilt, this contraction of shame, this contraction of sin that I'm fighting. I'm not learning a thing here. But my teacher stands there, and I'm going to look at him, and I'm going to see him. Does that fix this? No. But that's coming. And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. See, what we have is this, we have a little deafness. We get into this sin, and we fluster, and we ask God to, to straighten things out, or you're walking straight and through as you possibly walk, and stuff happens anyway, right? But I mean, you're messed up, that messed up things happen to you, bad things happen to good people, and you're in a situation, where is God? Well, there he is. And when I stop to look, when I wait for him until I can see him, I'm going to hear the words, behind you. He's not going to be out like you. Come on, this way. He's gonna, he's, he lets us walk. He's given us that freedom. He says, this is the way. Walk in. Whenever, not just sometimes, I turn to the right or I turn to the left. So important. Alright. We have a little time where you and I can kind of figure some things out. Let's I'll ask you to go ahead and just close your eyes just for a minute if that helps you to, to think about some stuff and, and help your heart change. It's hard living this life. It's a difficult life to live. There's hateful aspects to living. There's confusion. 
There's disappointments in life. There's times when you and I think we're doing the best we can do and going the right way, walking the Jesus path, doing what we can do, and, and yet it doesn't happen. But see, if we concentrate on Him, if we take our worldview and our intentional, our intentional of viewing God the way the true Word of God explains Him, and our difficulties are going to turn the corner. Our life's going to turn the corner. We will have significance. We will have meaning in our life. We will have purpose in our life. All the things that are after, all the things the world cannot provide are only found in Christ. And how is that found? By looking Him full in the face. By recognizing our position in Him. The Spirit's been given to us. We have power to this evil. He's promised to come back for us. He's keeping us in His holy name. We're one with Him, one in unity with Him. He has given us joy. We might not feel that joy, but He's given that joy, and we have to have to expect that others will be crazy about us with that for Christ. We're under His protection. And right now, right in this place, we are seated with Him. We already possess all we need. We just must be more attentive to possess it. We must love the Lord and love ourselves. Heavenly Father, we stop right now. We calm our hearts, Lord, before you. We praise you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy and your kindness to us. We praise you, Lord God, for the way you love us. And Lord, help us to be a little bit different these days. Help us to turn our heart to you. Help us to understand your way. Help us to stay on the Jesus path. Help us to be intentional in learning, Lord Father, what we need to learn from your word. Help us to use the might, love you with all our might, and change our schedules, change our sleep, change our whatever it needs changing, that we might walk with you, study with you, pray with you, gather with others, serve you, Lord God, and mention your name, share your name with other people, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that you might, for this minute, right now, for those who are in the sound of my voice, that they may be blessed of you, Lord God, that they may know the comfort of Jesus Christ in their life, and that the goodness of the Lord Christ might come to them. We ask these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. It is, you know, it, it's just one of these things, guys. It's just one of these things. We just, we just got to do it, you know. We just got to do it. You got to believe. You're looking at the world through a, through a lens. You are. I am. But let's come through the world through God's lens, through these things. These notes will be on the internet, and I'll post them for you and give you a link that you might take a peek at them. And it's just so powerful to review them. Right now, let's spend some time together in worship uh, with Pastor Jason.
Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Let's be sure to go out and bless his name today. Amen. And uh, Lord, bless and keep you. May Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Lord lift up his confidence upon each and every one of you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Make yourself known to someone you might not recognize there. And Welcome to restart. Woo yeah. Hey guys, it's Pastor Scott and Diana. We're out here at Restart Church. Yep, thumbs up. Uh, go back, uh, catch it from the beginning if you missed some of it or whatnot, or you're watching later if this is being uploaded to YouTube. Uh, and if you need anything at all, give us a call at one eight five five seventy Jesus. Um, we're going to be at the Ten Commandment part this afternoon, and then, God willing, we might have family uh, service, Sunday night service broadcasting at sometime tonight, trying to figure out the timing of it. Uh, so just keep your eyes peeled on my uh, timeline. If you need anything at all, give us a call at one 70 jesus or log on to our website at oneaccordcrusades.com. And then also be aware that we have our own uh, YouTube channel and the uh, website. We have a custom one or whatever. We, we earn the right to have that by having uh, 100 subscribers, finally. Thank you, Jesus. That was a prayer for quite some time. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash C forward slash One Accord Crusades International. We'll take you right there. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be alerted. And it's basically the same thing as our Facebook, but sometimes we upload a little different content. And uh, some people like to watch on YouTube versus Facebook. So we love you. God bless. Take care.